All right. Next of the joint types that we're going to look at is distance and rope joints. And I'll do these both in the same video because they're pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is that rope joints do, uh, do not constrain themselves to a maximum distance. Uh, sorry, a minimum distance. So once again, the way we add a joint is the same. We have to have two bodies connected and we use the cursor position to set. In this case, the cursor position will be used to set the local anchor position for body B. And the local anchor position for body A will be the body A position itself. And this is because usually a distance joint is observing a distance and a rope joint is also observing a distance as well. So it doesn't really make too much sense to just slap them straight in there on top of each other as we did for revolute joints. So anyway, body A, first select body A first and then body B. Spacebar to access the action menu. Uh, let's go with distance joint and then go into joint mode. So that has given us a joint here connecting these two bodies and as we can see from this blue dashed line the local anchor for B is this one here. So if I select this joint and move with using the T key we can move the anchor positions like this and let's, let's just run this and see what we get first so we can figure out what this is all about. Okay, so we have the two, this distance joint has connected these two bodies in that manner. And let's say we wanted to shift the anchor points around a little bit. So we can use the T key uh, to move, if we hit it once, we move the local anchor for body A. Let's put it at the base of this A here. And then if we hit that twice, as for other joints, now we be now we're moving the body B anchor point and I'll put this let's put it right at the top of the B like that. Now with distance joints we can see in here a little red marker. Now the reason this is showing here is because the distance that these two anchor points are apart in the current positions that they're in right now, they are further apart than the target length that was originally set when we created the joint. So the original target length was just the distance between the body A position and where we had the cursor. So it's kind of this this uh, place here that's 1.84 units apart. And the way we've arranged them here is uh, much longer than 1.8 units. So what's going to happen when we run this and we can see once again that the red marker shows us that these joint, this joint is disjoint. Um, so if we run this, we can see it pulls itself closer to there until we have it at the desired 1.8 units apart. So to change the length to something a little bit more uh, that we wanted, we can use T and we hit it three times and then we will see this display here with the red dashed marker and the arc showing um, in red. So what we can do is we can bring that this is what we're using to set the target length for the joint and as we bring it very close to the existing length of the joint we can see it turns green to show us that uh, it's uh, pretty much within range of the target there. So let's say we actually wanted to have this point at the top of the B. We wanted to have it dangling down. Uh, we wanted to have it like just dangling a little bit under the bottom of the A. So we could place our um, marker that 
and then when we reload this, run it again, we can see now that we have set the length for this joint to be much shorter. So this is how you can graphically set the length of the joints. And same goes for rope joints. So, oh, and if you obviously you can set it manually in here by changing that length. Um, so let's do a rope joint just quickly before we finish this video because uh, they're pretty much the same. So I'm going to just delete that joint, and we'll start off again. Uh, do we have bodies selected? Yes. Okay, so we still have those bodies selected. I'll just go back into joint mode. Now we add, this time we'll add a rope joint. So rope joints look very similar to distance joints except they have this kind of diagonal striping across um, which is supposed to look like a rope. And they also have this arc marker showing all the time. Uh, and other than that they are quite similar to distance joints because if we select them we will see uh, we have this length thing as well here. So basically we can do exactly the same things that we did. Let's say we wanted to move that anchor point down there and we wanted to connect the top of the B to that anchor point. Now we can see once again we have this uh, arc and the little red dash line in there which you can't see too well at the moment but it's there and the arc being in red in the case of a rope joint this means that the joint locations are too far away for the rope joints constraints so once again we can select the joint again and in the same way as for the distance joint if we hit the T key three times now we're setting the target length for the joint and if we bring this further than the current distance of the joint we can see it goes green to let us know that this is within the distance of this rope joint. Uh, so let's say we wanted to let's say we wanted to have the B dangling way down here we can see as the color changes that if we go into the green we can make it longer so let's have it dangling way way down here like that now we can see uh, in the current um, direction that the joint is heading it actually has this much more room to move before the rope constraint would kick in so let's just run that oops uh, let's run it like this so now we can see that um, as long as we have the joints selected to be shown in this menu here, we can also see this arc displayed while the simulation is running. And we can see from the green line there how much room the rope joints have to move before they will be constricting like that. So that's distance joints and rope joints. They're very similar. And in the next video, we are going to look at wheel joints. So I'll see you there.